Dear friends and followers, I am back from my trip to New York City. That's why I wasn't able to upload a video last week, so sorry for that. Today's topic will cover parts of airline operation costs and with a special focus on what is a cost index. So let's get started. Uh, 1383, runway 27, take off. This video is sponsored by Audible. Go to www.audible.com slash Captain Joe or click the link in the description box below to get an exclusive 30-day free trial and a book of your choice for free. For example, I would recommend The Highest Duty by Captain Sullenberger or other aviation-related books. Now, as we're going to explain the cost index in a moment, we first need to take a look at some airline operation costs, which are a defining part of the cost index. Now, most operation costs are given in costs per hour, meaning how expensive is it to operate an Airbus A320 per hour regarding the costs of the actual airplane like leasing rates, crew, plane maintenance, airport charges like the landing and takeoff fees or ground services and many other factors which play a big part in keeping the airplane in the air and making an airline profitable. And as you might have noticed, I didn't mention another very big factor, fuel costs, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Now, the cost index value ranges from 0 to 999. To get the cost index, you need to divide the flying costs by the fuel cost per hour. Now, let me give you an example. The flying costs of an Airbus A320 are roughly 16,500 US dollars per hour, including all the expenses I've mentioned before. The average fuel flow of an A320 is at about 2,300 kilograms per hour, which equals 1,100 US dollars per hour. And if you divide those two factors, you get the cost index for your flight. Now, the flying costs don't vary that much. The leasing rates are pretty fixed over the years, so is the salary of the crew, and the maintenance schedules are fairly repetitive too. But the airport costs can differ a lot. That's one of the reasons why low-cost airlines fly to these cheap little airports to reduce the overall expenses. But the fuel price constantly varies over time. Now, let's say the fuel costs per hour are at $800, you would see that the cost index would immediately rise. As you type in the cost index on the MCDU, the FMS will calculate the speed for the different flight phases, climb, cruise and descent in accordance with the cost index. So the more expensive the fuel, the lower is the cost index. The slower the aircraft will fly to be more economically efficient. The higher the cost index, the faster the plane will fly due to the fact that the fuel is cheap. But keep in mind, flying faster also means your engines will burn more fuel per hour, meaning you'll need more trip fuel for the same distance compared to a lower cost index. Now, the cost index won't influence the takeoff or the approach part of the flight, so we'll start and end the profile at 10,000 feet. Given the fact that a lot of airlines have speed restrictions below 10,000 feet, so the cost index is negligible. Using a lower cost index, the aircraft will fly at a reasonable low speed, resulting in a higher climb rate due to the excessive engine thrust. At the same time, it will recommend to fly at higher levels, resulting in a lower fuel burn and at slower speeds. The higher cost index will recommend a lower level, which will result in higher speeds, obviously at a higher fuel burn. As you are flying faster, most of the engine's thrust is used to maintain the high speed, 
resulting in a lower pitch attitude giving you a lower climb rate. As you start your descent with the lower cost index, your top of descent point is fairly early as you are descending at a lower speed, resulting in a lower descent rate. The average descent rate would be at about 1,500 feet per minute. Using the high cost index will lead to a relatively late top of descent resulting in a high descent rate and speed. As the cost index can either lengthen or shorten the flight time, it is very efficient on flights which are longer than two or more hours, depending on the current fuel price, etc. On shorter domestic flights, a high cost index will reduce the flight time by only one to six minutes, which in my opinion is not very efficient. But sometimes your company will send you a message stating that you should increase the cost index to reduce delays if you have passengers on board with connecting flights or other reasons. So as you can see, the cost index is the sweet balance between flight operational costs current fuel prices and the flight time. If you are wanting to become an airline pilot, this is also a common question during the airline assessment. So save this video in your playlist. I hope you enjoyed this video about the cost index. Make sure to perform a touch and go at my Instagram account. The link is in the description below and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out upcoming videos. Thanks for your time. All the best, your Captain Joe. Please click on the Audible link in the video description below so you don't miss out this great opportunity on getting an exclusive 30-day free trial with Audible. They are the leading provider of premium spoken audiobooks and other audio products. I've been an Audible user for quite some time now and I am amazed at their huge variety of audiobooks which you can easily download onto your smartphone, iPad or other mobile devices. I use it when I'm on a preceding flight or driving to work and currently I'm listening to the best-selling book The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs to learn on how to give a perfect presentation in the future because I'm going to give an aviation related presentation on how to become a pilot at the end of this year. And thanks to Audible, I got this book for free using my 30 day free trial. So make sure to check it out because there is always something new you can read, listen and learn. Maybe I should bring out my own audiobook in the future. <laughs>